associate professor of sociology and the director of African American studies at the University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh, very close to Kenosha. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. I actually know Kenosha, me. Wisconsin very well. I grew up a 20-minute drive from there, believe it or not, and I have to admit I was genuinely shocked uh, when I saw what's happening there because it always seemed just this small, kind of somewhat quiet Wisconsin border city. I have to ask, were you shocked as well, or was there always something kind of brewing under the surface that maybe we couldn't see? Well, knowing, you know, Wisconsin and knowing that um, Milwaukee being one of the uh, most segregated cities in the nation and one of the worst places for African Americans to live, knowing that Kenosha is just right, you know, um, miles away, there is a civil unrest in America. And, you know, it was just a matter of time before it reared its head in a very overt way here, you know, um, in Wisconsin. And so, no, I wasn't surprised um, to, to hear that it happened. I was shocked, you know, but I knew it was just a matter of time. Being that George Floyd was just there in Minnesota, um, it was going to, you know, it's going to reap its harvest, reap a, a bitter harvest actually soon. Right. Yeah, this whole thing, I feel like, has really blown the lid off, you know, the fact that there are these urban centers, but somehow these suburban areas and the areas outside the, the metropolitan cities are somewhat quieter. That's, you know, the Midwest America that so many people know that's nice and quiet. Yeah. It's not that way. This is a widespread national issue. Uh, so where do you see the whole movement actually going? Are things going to change for the better because of what's been exposed <sighs> over the last, you know, months? Well, you know, before things get better, um, generally, they do get worse. And I tend to be um, an optimist, and I do believe that things will get better. But see, the problem is that we're focusing on the what and not necessarily the why. You know, when we begin to explore why these riots happen, why these, the looting, um, why these things are erupting um, after incidents like this, um, we can then better understand how systems of oppression are damaging to this country as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a social contract that has been broken. It's been broken for, for over a century between America and African-American people in general. And so I, I just, I, I think that that contract is going to have to be fixed, but it's very difficult to, to get that social contract fixed because it's been so long, you know, out of commission. And right. we've been operating in this country, you know, in a very um, backward and type I, of way. And it's like I said earlier, it's just rearing its head. Right. And Alfonso, what I see now that's kind of frightening me is that um, instead of, you know, this movement kind of, at first it seemed to be getting a lot of compassion. Uh, from segments of society that hadn't really been aware of the kind of oppression and discrimination that really did exist. It seemed that way at least at first. But now we're seeing, even now in Kenosha, when they're talking about this militia that may have been active, and to see President Trump feature that couple out of St. Louis that actually brought their guns out uh, on protesters that were outside that property, to see them being turned into kind of heroes in a way for the anti uh, movement uh, that that we've we've seen grow here. That's what worries me. Do you are you scared that this is could become, it could backfire in many ways and become even more divisive. Absolutely, absolutely. I um I am I'm terrified by that. And um, yes, I do see that backfiring. Um, it's already begun. Um, like I said, this civil unrest, it's been here for a long time. And it's really now, you know, um, just budding. It's blossoming now, especially in the wake of, you know, this being an election year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have these these groups that are uh, militia that are actually coming in. And they're actually doing a lot of the looting and doing a lot of the rioting. They are not the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, they are not the citizens of Kenosha. These are people who are coming in from the outside who are burning down the buildings, who are, you know, um, stirring up the, the, the damaging trouble, you know, the things that are happening. And so it's very easy to point fingers at 
the group that's been looked at as like you all are the problem people, you know. Right. And so it's 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 backfiring um, in America in a big way. It's backfiring um, on African well, not African American people because we're really just the victims of this right now. Okay. You know, and I, I don't think that we're going to get out of this until we see something you know, even more devastating happened. Like I said, I try to be an optimist, but it's very difficult, you know, in this circumstance. Okay. Alfonso, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Really, thank you so much for being with us from Oshkosh. Thank you.